Abraham, can you tell me how were you chosen? They came in order, Germans, to take out the barb as they could get. And they need him job. What kind of job they needed for it, we didn't know at that time. But we got it together as many barbers as we could. How long did it happen after you arrived in Treblinka? So that, I would say that would help me about uh, four weeks after I was in Treblinka. It was in the morning? In the... Uh, that was in the morning. That was around 10 o'clock when a trans to Treblinka and the woman went into the gas chambers. And they chose people from the working people over there and they asked question who was a barber who was not a barber. I was a barber for uh, quite a number of years. And some of them, they knew me, like from people from Transylvania. So naturally, they chose me, and I selected some more barbers, which I know. And we got it together. Professional barber. Official, yes. We got it together. And we're waiting for the order to go with them, with the Germans. They took us in to the guest chamber, to the part of the camp in Treblinka. It was far from the first part? It was not too far, but all covered with gates, barbed wires, and trees covering the gate. There is a gate, or there is a place going in to the guest chamber. Is it what the Germans call the Schlauch? Germans, what they call, they call like going to road to the heaven. Himmelweg. Road to the heaven. And we know about it because we worked for quite a time before we went in to work in the guest. Going in over there, they put in some benches where the woman could sit and that this is the last way or that is the last time they're going to live or they're going to breathe to know what is going on. How long did it last that the barbers cut the hair inside the gas chamber? Because it was not always the case. Inside the gas chamber for about a week or ten days after that, they decided uh, in the undressing barrack. How did it look, the gas chamber? It was a room, not a big room. The room was, I would say, the size by 12 by 12. But in that room, they pushed in a lot of wood. It was one on top of the other one. But like I mentioned before, when we came in, we didn't know that what, what we're going to do. And he came in and he said, Barbers, you have to do a job to make to believe all those women that came in that a haircut and going in to take a shower. And from there, they go out from this place. But we know going out from this room because this room is the last place where they went in alive and they will never go out alive again. Uh, can you describe precisely? Precisely to describe is when the transport came in, waiting there until the transport came in, women with children to that place. We, the barbers, started to cut the hair, and some of them, I would say all of them, so happened to them. We tried to do the best what we could. No, 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 no. The no. most human being what we could. 
How did it happen when the woman came and entered the gas chamber? Were you yourself already in the gas chamber or did and you again, come afterwards? And I, I said, because Please. we were waiting over there for the transport to come in. You were inside? Inside. We were already in. And suddenly you saw the woman coming? Yes, they came in. How were they? They were without clothes, without anything else. All of them completely naked? Completely naked. All the women and it all the children. It. Them too. Because they came from the undressing barracks. There was barracks before going into the gas chamber where they had undressed themselves. You feel the first time that it happened that you saw all these naked women coming? Well, I felt that accordingly for me to cut the hair in a way that it should look like a barber is doing his job, like he's doing a job for a woman, and I said, both to take off as much hair as we could because they needed the woman's hair to be. This means that you didn't shave them? No, we did not shave. We just cut the hair, make the believe that they... But you cut with what, with scissors? With scissors, yes. With scissors and we comb, without any clippers. Just like uh, a man. Not a, not a body one to take out, to take off all the hair, but just to have the imagination that they're getting a nice... There were no mirrors, no? No, there were no mirrors, there were just benches, not chairs, but just benches, where we worked about 16, 17, and there were had a lot of women in. Every haircut, it took about two minutes, no more than that, because there was an end to get rid of the hair. Can you imitate now? How did you do? Well, how would it? Because uh, we were quite a number of uh, professional barbers. And the way we did, we just stopped this. And we cut, and we just cut this like this, here and there and there, and this side and this side, and the head was all finished. Big movements. But big, naturally, with big movement because we could not waste any time. The other party was waiting to do the same thing, the same uh, job, the same procedure. You said that you were 16 barbers. Uh, yes. About. This means a woman in one batch. In one patch, they uh, was about, I would say, going into that place between and the same room at one time. And afterwards, the doors of the guest chamber after, were closed. After that, we were finished with this party and about 140, 150 women. You they were... all were already taken care of. They told us to leave for a few minutes, about five minutes, where they put in the gas and they chucked them to death. Where did you wait? And on the other side, where on this side the woman went in, and the other side was a group working people, which they took out them, they were not exactly dead. They took him out, and in two minutes, not even two minutes, in one minute everything was clean, to take in the other party of the other woman, to go through the same thing what the first one they went through. Tell me, is this woman? Most of them, they had long hair, they had short hair, but we had to do the job to get rid of the hair. Like I mentioned that, the Germans, they needed... But I have asked you, and we didn't answer, what was your uh, impression the first time you saw arriving this naked woman? I tell you something, to have a feeling over there it was very hard to feel anything or to have a feeling. Because working there day and night in their bodies, men and women, your feeling disappeared. You were dead with your feeling. You had no feeling at all. As a matter of fact, I wanted to the gas chamber. When I was chosen in over there to work as a barber, some of women that came in from a transport from my 
And from the women, from the number of women, I know a lot of people. You knew them? I know them. I live with them in my, in my street. And I was, some of them, they were my close friends. And when they saw me, all of them started hugging me. Isn't that what you're doing here? What's going to help me with us? What could you tell them? What could you tell? A friend of me worked as a barber. He was also a good barber in my hometown. When his wife and his sister to the guest chamber, You have to. Please. We have to do it. You know it. I won't be able to do it. You, you have to do it. I know, I know, and I apologize. Don't keep me long with that, please. Please, don't let's go. Taking in with bags that was transported to the and as army parts in this of the sun didn't in Deutschland. Okay, go ahead. That's what be the answer when his wife found it. They tried to talk to him and the husband. They could not tell them that is the last time they stay alive. Because behind them, the SS men, um, they knew. The minute they will say a word, not only the wife and the woman which they but also they will share the same part with them. But in a way, they try to do the best for them. To a second longer, a minute longer, just to hug them and just to kiss them because they know them.